we bring you an update on the search for MH370 plus Ocean Infinity ships, its equipment, and the operational deployment of those assets. Welcome to another special edition of Airline Daily News covering MH370. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and delighted to say I'm joined again by UK aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey, who has been doing extensive research on Ocean Infinity and, of course, the search for MH370. Firstly, Richard, the location of Amada 7806, where is she? Yeah, um, still underway in, in the Indian Ocean, um, st still uh, tackling the, the storm uh, Talia. The wave height is uh, 3.5 meters where Armada 7806 is currently. It's 11 and a half feet, so quite uh, uh, high uh, waves to, to uh, battle with but still making um, progress as scheduled uh, to be in the MH370 search area on the 23rd of February in, in uh, five days' time. So that calculation you've done um, puts her around about the seventh arc, uh, which is the MH370 search area, given the current speed. Yes, it's uh, the destination is officially offshore Australia, uh, but we're now talking about 1,500 kilometres offshore uh, from Australia. Uh, it would take uh, a couple of days longer uh, for Ocean Infinity if it were heading, for example, to Fremantle, uh, the port that uh, Ocean Infinity previously used in 2018. So that's quite clearly not the case. It's heading uh, for the MH370 search area, which, as you mentioned, is in the vicinity of the so-called uh, Seventh Arc. And that search area we're showing you on the screen uh, at the moment. Now, Richard, another one of Ocean Infinity's vessels that we've been sort of uh, looking at and trying to follow is 8601, and that apparently has popped up. Yes, Amada 8601 is the um, latest uh, um, asset uh, Ocean Infinity took delivery at the end of December last year. It's been undergoing sea trials in the South China Sea, um, and uh, it reappeared on uh, the satellite tracking AIS uh, last night. Um, so the mystery of where... <laughs> Uh, 8601 is, uh, is uh, meanwhile uh, resolved and uh, I assume that once the sea trials uh, are completed it will then take on a deployment uh, in business as usual for Ocean Infinity. Now we've been talking a lot about the Yamada ships and, and the uh, these, are, these are ships that have been specially built by Ocean Infinity for um, various search roles, but the company also has quite a few other ships that it has acquired over the uh, over time. Perhaps you can run through those for us. Yes, uh, Ocean Infinity currently has fifteen ships. Um, the Armada fleet is uh, is pride and joy, but it has a, a number of other vessels uh, either on uh, long-term lease or vessels uh, that they have acquired. Um, Ocean Infinity um, acquired a company called MMT and they had uh, several uh, vessels. They've uh, sold off one or two, but uh, others uh, they've kept. So we talk a lot about the Amada fleet, but we can also uh, remind ourselves in 2018, um, Ocean Infinity used the seabed constructor, which they uh, leased uh, for a number of years. That lease is now terminated, but they still operate um, Island Pride and uh, Normand uh, Frontier 
um, and they're very active in Ocean Infinity's business around the world. Now, that's the ships. Now, a lot of our viewers have been asking us what sort of equipment that Ocean Infinity will be using for the search for MH370, and you've done a, quite a bit of work on that as well, and it looks like a fairly impressive array of the latest technology for uh, underwater work. Perhaps you can walk us through that. Yes, Ocean Infinity has invested heavily in uh, equipment uh, for their various ships. They um, own 21 AUVs, autonomous underwater vehicles, um, which they use uh, in search operations. These uh, vehicles are equipped with uh, latest uh, sonar equipment, um, and they are, are very useful in in searching and i mentioned previously that ocean infinity were very successful in in searching for and finding a number of uh, uh, vessels uh, like the san juan submarine the minerve submarine like the stella daisy or the uh, grande america uh, ships uh, including Sh uh, shackleton's uh, ship Mm. Uh, the endurance um, found in the uh, Antarctica uh, and the USS Nevada. So they have an impressive amount of equipment. Apart from the AUVs, they also have 26 remote operated vehicles. Uh, each of the Armada ships has a moon pool uh, or two moon pools uh, in the deck where uh, you can lower equipment um, on a, using a winch uh, into the sea directly. And this uh, protects uh, the equipment and the crew from uh, the, the ocean waves that are uh, outside. The moon pool is uh, uh, relatively still water underneath the, the ship. But the, these equipment can also be deployed... Um, overboard um, especially at the rear of the each vessel they have uh, the uh, means to uh, deploy uh, equipment that uh, ocean infinity um, has an impressive uh, amount of equipment not all it, its equipment is rated for 6000 meter depth uh, some just for 3000 some yeah. at, at 5000 uh, and, and that's important to note the, uh, for the MH370 search, uh, then you do need equipment that's rated at five or, or 6,000 meters uh, of depth. Indeed. Now, the global deployment um, of, of these assets, for instance, uh, 7806, what do we know what's on board that vessel uh, at this stage? Um, Ocean Infinity uh, have been quite uh, transparent about uh, what equipment uh, they have on, on what ships. Uh, they have a, a large number of different operations around the world for oil companies like Shell or Exxon Mobil. Uh, they're involved in a number of wind farm projects um, off the coast of California with Equinor or uh, Orsted or RWE, the German uh, energy uh, giant uh, in the North Sea. Uh, it's uh, interesting to note uh, when you look at the deployment, the water depths of some of these uh, uh, operations in the North Sea and the, the Norwegian Sea. Uh, the Baltic Sea, the, the depths are not uh, so great. And if you're going to build a wind farm, uh, the water depth at that point may just be 20, 40 or, or, or 60 meters. Um, there are other um, projects, for example, Armada 7806, which is now underway to the MH370 search area, was previously an uh, offshore project in Taiwan uh, as its last project. The water depth uh, there was 4,500 metres. Um, so that's uh, 
quite uh, quite substantial and and shows that the equipment on board uh, uh, 7806 is designed for that uh, kind of depth um, 7807 was in two and a half thousand meters off California uh, Island Pride is 4,800 meters uh, off the coast of West Africa. Uh, Norman Frontier in 1,500 meters of water off the coast of Guyana in South America. Um, so Ocean Infinity uh, deploy their assets uh, according to the, the uh, requirements of, of, of each operation. Mm. And indeed, uh, Ocean Infinity was the launch customer, for instance, for the Saab um, CI uh, ROV, um, which is the latest technology piece of equipment. And that's got a couple of um, arms on it as well for um, recovering bits and pieces. Indeed, the, the remote operating uh, vehicles, ROVs, um, they have three different uh, a manufacturer, um, two from Saab and one from a company called Schilling. The Schilling ROV is a, a heavy duty uh, ROV. It can go to um, quite uh, extreme depths of up to 6,000 uh, meters. Um, the Saab CI uh, EW ROV, uh, the electrical working uh, remote operating vehicle, uh, has options down to 5,000 meters. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, Ocean Infinity bought 10 uh, of those um, uh, as a, an initial customer. The Saab CI Leopard ROV goes only to 3,000 meters, and they have 13 of those. Um, so they, they have a good complement of different equipment for different tasks in different areas. It would seem that Oliver Plunkett's, the CEO's claim that we're the world's number one underwater search company has uh, has some validity. Indeed, indeed it does, but uh, it's a competitive market. Uh, mm. There are a number of players. Uh, uh, I think uh, Fugro would argue with Ocean Infinity about uh, who's number one. Um, and there are other players joining that market all the time. Uh, marine robotics, uh, offshore uh, energy uh, is, um, is really key. The world needs a, a huge amount of uh, energy and oil and gas resources, wind farms, uh, are very important in the uh, ongoing energy requirement uh, and the... Mm under under sea um, assets we have in oil and gas and minerals is uh, uh, something which is of attractive to many companies to search for one thing for certain if ocean infinity is successful in finding mh370 uh, it'll be a household name forever and a day and they'll certainly be able to claim they're the number one because that's probably the most high profile uh, search uh, in in modern times. So uh, we wish them well, and we're uh, thank you, Richard, for your uh, update on on all the uh, on the assets, the ships, the equipment, and the location. And uh, we're going to keep you, the viewers, uh, up to date with what's going on on a daily or possibly every second day basis, depending on what's happening, and. Uh, so please subscribe to us, please like us, please leave us your comments. We're really responding to your feedback. A lot of you folks have asked for more details about the equipment and that's what we've given you today. And uh, do tune in again for another edition of uh, Daily Airline News. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.